welcome and thank you for joining us again through Facebook Live and YouTube channel. We hope that you all have a great week. We are happy that you have chosen to join us in our presentation. May you be blessed with our program and may God continue to bless all of you. Our foundation text is found in Matthew 24, 32 and 35. 35. I read, now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. May God bless you all with this holy word. Uh, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for our friends who have joined and who are joining us in our program. Please bless us today with happiness and love that we may experience peace and joy in our hearts. Bless our families so that they'll be comforted, knowing that you'll be there to guide and support them. May you also bless our program today. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. But before we listen to Dr. Frias, let us all sing our opening song.
Thank you so much for that uh, beautiful song, uh, Brother Dale Williams. Thank you so much. May God bless you and may you continue to uh, make songs or compose songs that will give blessings to uh, the people of the world. Uh, we're so happy. I would like to welcome all of you into our uh, program this evening. Uh, we're so happy that we can be with you again. I hope you had a good, blessed week. And I know that you're going to have a blessed uh, Sabbath weekend this week. Because we're going to talk about a very exciting subject. Exciting subject that uh, we are all looking forward to. The coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because uh, we are tired of living in this world that is uh, run by uh, his enemy, by Satan. Because his management has uh, causes so much problem for everyone. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to that uh, uh, time when our dear Savior will come and uh, uh, transfer us, uh, take us to his uh, eternal kingdom where he will be the emperor of uh, the, the place. Uh, okay, before we begin, I would like to invite you to uh, I would like to make a short prayer only. Father God, we're now going to start our the presentation of the subject that you would like me to relate to the people of the world. Dear Father, I pray that you will bless the words that will come out of my mouth. May they all be warranted by you. Forgive us from where we have fallen short of your glory. This I ask in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Okay, the subject of our study now. Um, All right, the signs uh, uh, of uh, Jesus coming. Our, uh, our topic is when will Jesus come and what will happen after, after that? Now, Jesus gave uh, when uh, Jesus was his disciples. His disciples asked him, what shall be the sign of your coming? When are you going to come? What will be the sign of your coming? Now, think of the world as a giant clock face called the hour hand, uh, the Bible signs, and the minute hand, the world conditions. When we see the world conditions coming nearer and nearer to the point of agreement with the Bible signs, we may know by that sure token that our Lord's return is near. Now, I would like you to consider these 12 signs of uh, the return of Jesus Christ that are mentioned here in the Bible. As we have studied in the last couple of few days, we have to believe the Bible because uh, there are so many witnesses to the Bible. Uh, the spade was a witness to the Bible. Archaeology and ancient artifacts witness to the Bible. Because of excavation, they were able to uh, extract uh, different uh, portions of the Bible, some in uh, uh, some carbon rocks, some carbon skins, uh, animal, some in papyrus, all of this. And uh, later on, uh, uh, the, the, it was, they were all unearthed because of excavation. When they were all unearthed and they, they gathered them together and they tried to compose them, uh, to, to put them together, it was uh, during the time of King James of England. And King James of England uh, made sure, he made a decree that there should be no changes in the translation of the Bible. He called uh, uh, prominent scholars and different nations of the world were represented to come and take a look at the translations of the Bible. And everybody, uh, everyone was watching for the other, so nobody can change it. Because if it was possible to change the things of the Bible, they, they should have changed it. You see, like it's easy. For example, many, uh, many leaders, uh, religious leaders, teachers, 
that uh, things that are not in the Bible, like for example, that we should worship images. They should, they should have placed that in the Bible if they were able to change it. Or that the uh, holiday is going to be Sunday or Friday or whatever day. But they teach that, but in the Bible, it still remains to be the Sabbath. Why? Because God said that this Bible, nobody can change it. Nobody can change it. And even the if uh, even when many emperors tried to destroy and burn the Bible, they were not able to burn the Bibles, but uh, they were able to get information about the Bible uh, when they found, uh, for example, the Rosetta, Rosetta Stone, when they found the uh, Moabite rock, when they found the uh, cylinder of Nabonidos, and many different uh, uh, portions of uh, taken from different materials, the, and even the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. We have seen some of this uh, in the museum in Israel when we went there in Jerusalem, and uh, they were really original uh, writings from the Bible that were translated during the time of King James. That was the first translation of the Bible, and the authors, the writers, the prophets who wrote them, they they did not even know each other because they even lived different era and time from the other prophets. But God led them to be able to write the Bible. So the Bible is unquestionably correct uh, with all of uh, the information to be truthful because it's the mind of God that was placed in the Bible. So uh, there, were, uh, 12, there are 12 signs according to this holy book that uh, God has uh, presented to us, uh, the manual that God gave us in order for us to know what is going on because everything that happens in this world are all in the Bible. Without the Bible, you will not you know, even know about God. You will not know about Satan. You will not know about heaven. You will not know about hell. Uh, we will not even know about uh, salvation, about everlasting life. They're all here. So let's go through the 12 signs that God placed in the Bible as a sign of his coming. Now, the first sign, the scoffer sign. The scoffers are those people who are making fun of you when you try to present to them the Bible. Like, uh, let's say you invite somebody, let's do a Bible study, and then they just laugh at you. Are you crazy? And those Bibles are just written by man, and, and I cannot believe them. So they laugh, they even insult you sometimes. Now, that is one of the signs. So if somebody will, will uh, criticize you for trying to present the Bible to them, well, you should, well, you should answer them. Tell them, well, you are the latest sign that uh, I have seen uh, that the Bible talks about. And uh, so these are scopra signs. That's how uh, these people look like when they laugh at you because you talk to them about God and his writing and his uh, information that he wanted us to know. The war sign, uh, in the 20th century has witnessed the two most devastating wars of all history in 1914 to 1918 and 1939 to 1945. A total of over 70 million were killed, wounded or missing. But none of the 40 hundred years since the close of World War II has been wholly free from conflict, even continuously even during the time of the Israelites, there's always fighting wars uh, because this is, uh, this is now the territory of Satan and there's always a problem. Even from uh, when uh, Adam and Eve committed sin, the fighting, the quarrels started there, right from the two brothers, Cain and Abel, because it was already, this whole world was already dominated by sin. So, uh, the war sign. That's why death continues to be a war sign, uh, always warring the Jews against the Palestinians. Uh, we had the U.S. Uh, fighting in Iraq the last time. And now we have the Ukraine war going on. I don't know what happens after this, but I hope this will be the last war. But do not be scared. Many people talk about a nuclear war that will destroy all the earth, maybe kill all the people of the earth. I don't believe that God is going to allow that because according to the Bible, uh, he, will, uh, he will be the one to destroy this earth. He will be the one to burn this earth 
uh, with fire together with uh, Satan when he burns Satan. So uh, that's why in the Bible it says that God is going to assign four angels uh, the four, uh, at the four corners of the earth to hold uh, the people from trying to destroy the whole world. So it will be controlled. That's why don't be afraid if China says they're going to use a nuclear bomb to fight the U.S. or North Korea. Well, if there are angels holding the winds of flight, I know that it will not happen. But there will be small wars fighting and wars, small wars all the time. Now, the, uh, so these are the war signs. We have the famine sign. Uh, over the century, uh, we uh, have witnessed, the world has witnessed four of the greatest famines of recorded in history. There was one in Russia in 1921, uh, 1933, or one in China in 1928 to, to 1930, in Bengal, 1943 to 1944, a total death of 20 million people uh, because of uh, famine. Now, there's famine going on in uh, many poor countries of the world, like especially in Africa. So, but this is one of the signs uh, that is the, and the, the administration of Satan, it is not fair. There's all these people suffering. And so this is the, uh, some photos of the famine where you see some of the pictures here. Uh, people were almost just like uh, skeletons already. Now they have the pestilence signs. The early years of our country witnessed one of the greatest pestilences on record, the Spanish influenza epidemic of 1918. Now, other pestilences like the AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, for example. And uh, that's one of the killer disease that has um, surfaced. But now we are dealing with this uh, coronavirus. Coronavirus, and that's why uh, we know that there are many people who died already because of coronavirus. I do not know what will happen. Of course, there's another, the monkeypox, they call. I don't know what else, but this is, these are some of the signs that will uh, surface, that will come out because they've been predicted in the Bible already, way before that, when the, those uh, carved stones and rocks were found, they already talked about these things. That's why we should not be surprised about them. That's why, but uh, my advice is to uh, be close and connect ourselves with God because he can protect us from anything unless he allows us to be affected with these things, but then we will be affected because we are not immune. Even if we are God, we are not immune from the uh, risk of, uh, that we have, that are there in this world, but we should just stick to him so that in case uh, we summon to death uh, with these uh, different uh, epidemics and and uh, this onslaught of Satan. If we die, the best thing to do is to be able to happen to us is to die in the Lord, because when we die in the Lord, he knows that he's going to resurrect us and give us eternal life. Uh, so people are dying because of COVID-19 and the onslaught of different sicknesses and diseases. We have the earthquake sign. Uh, so many earthquakes have happened before. Uh, 180,000 people were died in China in 1920. In Japan, 1923, 1,500,000 and 200,000 perished uh, just last week. I believe this week, about a few days ago, uh, there was a, uh, an earthquake there in the Philippines, in the northern part of the Philippines. So there are so many, as you can see in the list, and so many earthquakes. But this is what happened uh, regarding the history of earthquakes. Uh, in 1900 and before, there were only 23 major earthquakes on record. In 1900, after, uh, in less than 100 years, 37 major earthquakes. 1900 and before, the means of transportation were horses. After 1900, uh, the engine was started to be invented. And now, uh, every three years, knowledge, month knowledge increases and doubles every three years. Now, this is also one of the signs. The knowledge will increase, the knowledge sign. Uh, it has increased so much that we are now 
Uh, we now have available motorized transport, aerodynamics, technological uh, warfare, telecommunication, satellite, nuclear, electronics, and uh, see, so many kinds, all kinds of invention. If you know this guy here, Elon Musk, he even uh, already invented this uh, automobile that is run by computer and by electricity, by battery only. So, and uh, some other vehicles now are being run by, uh, could be run by solar. So this is the knowledge sign. We also have the parallel sign. They are like people with brooms. The parallel signs are the most ingenious and costly equipment of fighting crime, violence, murder, robbery, rape are increasing at an alarming rate. Prostated law enforcement agencies can curb, but they cannot cure all these problems. Like here in our city in Toronto, almost every day, there is somebody dying, uh, being shot, being stabbed or something. It's not very safe anymore. That's why uh, many people do not even go out in the evening anymore. Uh, now, these are like the police or the uh, government uh, uh, agency that are trying to control this crime. Uh, they are like uh, people with brooms uh, on the sea, sea shore trying to, to sweep back the incoming tide. Do you think that's possible? That's how uh, difficult it is to deal with this crime, especially the international drug trafficking. Now, so many people are dying because of these crimes going on, uh, rapes and murder. The pollution sign. Since 1950s, mankind has come suddenly awake to an insidious new global very uh, environmental pollution. Pollution has become second mortal menace that ranks beside nuclear war in its apocalyptic magnitude of horror and horror. Now, that's why we're talking about that. They, they're even talking about this uh, uh, assigning a day for environmental holiday in order to curb or to lessen uh, pollution. But this is also an excuse. You see, in the Bible prophecy, there's going to be a time when uh, a legislation uh, will be made, which will be called the Sunday law. So the Sunday law, it might be starting because they're going to have a holiday for this climate holiday, and it's going to be on a Sunday. So I hope that uh, I, I, I hope that it's not yet the actual Sunday law in the Bible, but we should prepare for that because when that Sunday law is legislated uh, uh, by government, uh, by the old governments around the world, uh, that will really expose that uh, uh, we will be, uh, it will be, people will be made to choose already because the uh, Sunday is a man's made uh, holy day, according to the Bible, while God's mark of authority is the Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. So when people are uh, already asked to choose between the two, the Sabbath of uh, the Lord, man's, uh, uh, God's uh, mark of authority against man's heart of authority, uh, man's uh, authority, which is the Sunday worship, then according to the Bible, God is going to close the probation. At the time, uh, he will pronounce, he will start to divide the people into two classes. And uh, when there's a showdown uh, where people will be made to, will be forced to choose between uh, Sabbath, uh, which is the uh, Mara, the uh, authority of God against the uh, mark of the beast, which is Sunday authority of man. At that time, uh, we have to make a proper decision because at that time, God will uh, divide the people into two, two groups, those whom he will save and those who will not. Those who go with the uh, Sunday worship, which is not the, from God, according to the Bible, then according to the Bible, not according to me, according to the Bible, they might lose uh, that opportunity to enter God's kingdom. Because at that time, they're going to be putting God into an open chain by choosing the wrong day. Uh, that's not the day that God has authorized to be 
uh, a holiday. Anyway, pollution sign. And then we have the fear sign. With the advent of the at atomic bomb, our dream of peace and security has turned into a chilling nightmare of horror. But that was in 1945. But now we have the nuclear bomb that had been invented, which might be more horrible than the, um, than the atomic bomb. Uh, that's why uh, we have so many problems with international terrorism and so on. And uh, we have also this uh, extremity sign. Jesus predicted that in the last days, we would witness the development of crisis in human affairs that would be beyond much power, man's power to remedy or control. He used the word perplexity, which means no exit, no way out. And uh, the problem of the world now, uh, in trying to solve it, the comparison was made here. It's like an elephant hanging over a cliff with its tail tied to a daisy. That is how uh, rapidly uh, escalate how uh, the problem. Man has no permanent solution for this rapidly escalating problems, whether they be social, economic, political, environmental, or moral problems. They point all to no return. So this is the uh, perplexed time. And the gospel sign, according to the Bible, According to Matthew, when this gospel is preached as a witness to all nations, then the end will come. Now with the inventions, now with technology like the Zoom, uh, internet, um, uh, all this, the computers and so on, uh, even one person can preach the gospel. Like here, I can preach the gospel of Christ here. And it could be heard if people will tune in to this, uh, uh, to my channel. I also have a YouTube. You can probably, you should probably visit my YouTube. Go to uh, YouTube channel, search for Noel Prias, and you will see my picture then. And I have already 253 uh, videos there. Most of them are sermon from God's word. So you can choose the topic everything you'll find that even how the Bible was written, why and how the Bible was written, you'll find it there. You can do a, your own Bible study there. And so with one person preaching in one place, it could be heard all over the world if everybody will tune uh, into it. Like last year, for example, uh, Pastor Dan Smith of California, he did an evangelistic seminar online. And he asked me to be the one to interpret in Filipino because it was directed uh, in the Philippines. He was speaking English, I was speaking Filipino. He was in California, I was here in Toronto. But we have a technician who just uh, put that together. It, it looks like we are in one state because we smile at each other, we talk to each other, say even shake hands to each other. And so people can see it seems like we're in one state. But we were here. Only uh, we didn't have an audience except through the internet, through the Zoom. And you know, because of that preaching in the Philippines alone, we were able to uh, invite, there were over 9,000 people who joined in and decided to be members of God's remnant church. So that's all, uh, but now, so one of the signs, one of the last signs before the Sunday law, before the, seven last plagues, according to the Bible, is this gospel sign. When the gospel has been preached to all the world, uh, where people were, have heard of it, and they have heard uh, of God's mark of authority, which is the Sabbath, to get them ready for that big showdown between God's mark of authority and the mark of the beast. So when that is exposed and people will make a decision, uh, at least people have heard about it already, so they have to make their own decision. So when the gospel, when this information has been spread to all the world as a witness to all nations, then will come according to the Bible. And so that's why many preachers are preaching it. If you listen to preachers in the TV, because so many of them, thousands of them, are all preaching, you should always compare whatever they preach, look for it in your Bible. Because the Bible are, are the same, whether you are a 
uh, Protestant, Catholic, whatever religion is, if you talk about the Bible, the writings of the Bible, it's all the same. If everybody will read the Bible and obey it, literally according to what it says, there will only be one religion in this whole world, one group of people. But people keep on changing what is in the Bible. That's why when you listen to preachers and TV, you should verify in the Bible what they are preaching about. Uh, if you cannot verify in the Bible according to Galatians 1.8, Galatians 1.8 that says that even if it were an angel who will come to you and preach a gospel to you, uh, and he tells you, I'm an angel of God. I just came from heaven. I came down to give you this news. Uh, according to the Bible, according to what God says, Galatians, uh, let me read to you what it says. Uh, Galatians 1.8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, with that which is, uh, that we preach unto you, uh, gospel unto you, than that which we are preaching to you, let them be accursed. I mean to say, if the, the angel gives you an information that you cannot find the Bible, you have to curse that angel. You have to send that angel away. Tell that angel, why don't you go away? Because you're trying to deceive me. You're teaching me something that could not be found in God's word. You better go away uh, or uh, because you're not an angel of God. You're an angel of Satan because Satan is an angel too and angels too. Satan has uh, God has disciples, Satan has disciples also. God has ministers, Satan has ministers also. So even your own leader or minister, he tried to preach to you gospel and you cannot find it here in the Bible. Tell them, I'm sorry, Pastor. Um, I, I think I'm going to stop going to your church because you're trying to teach me something that is not in the Bible. You're trying to deceive me. If I continue listening to you, I don't know what else you're going to tell me, which is not in the Bible. So you're leading me away from God. And when Jesus comes, uh, I don't think if you come, I come with you, will you be able to resurrect me from death? So I better listen to Jesus because he will be able to resurrect me from death. He showed us an example. He died himself. He was able to resurrect himself from death. So he promised that he will do it to those people who listen, accept, and obey him. Now, that's why we have preachers here. Some of the preachers that I recommend, uh, Pastor Mark Finley, for example, uh, Pastor Doug Bachelor, they're uh, preachers of the truth. Um, we have uh, Warren Veit. We have Stephen Bohr. We have uh, Bill, Pastor Bill Santos and many others. Uh, so just, just compare what they say that they have to be in the Bible. Anyway, the old the old designs, the old designs. It says here, when confronted with impressive list of signs, some people argue, but crimes and wars and earthquakes and pestilences have always been happening. There's nothing abnormal about this thing. So how can we treat them as signs? Besides, since your people in the past have expected the Lord to return in their day and had been disappointed. They have misrepresented the signs because the Bible mentioned that God has an agenda that he has to follow. There will still be first uh, National Sunday Law and then the seven last plagues. On the seventh plague, Jesus will appear in heaven. That's what it says in the Bible. So uh, the, the National Sunday Law for the whole world has not been uh, legislated yet because that's one of the big signs where God is going to uh, close the probation on people and decide who will be saved and who will not be saved. Today, for the first time since the recent Lord ascended to heaven, all the predicted major signs of the end of the age are synchronizing. One or more of these signs may be occurred in earlier generation. They did not occur all simultaneously. For example, there were times when there were wars, but there was no uh, crime. Uh, there was crime but uh, there was no increasing of knowledge every three years, doubling of knowledge. And uh, so, but now they seem to all be happening at the same time in our lifetime. And let me tell you what the Bible says uh, when it all happens at the life, uh, in our lifetime. Here, in Matthew uh, 25, Matthew 24, 32. 
It was read by my wife. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Likewise, you know, you, you find that when uh, where there are four seasons, when the uh, branches, uh, when the buds are coming out, the coming leaves, you know that uh, uh, it's springtime and then summer is uh, coming, uh, is coming soon. When it's full of leaves, you know it's summer, but when the leaves start to change to brown, you know that's going to be fall. And then when there's no more leaves, the trees are all, uh, the old branches, no leaves, you know, it's, it's winter. So, verily unto you, I say unto you, it says, so likewise, when you see all these things happening in your lifetime, let's say in our lifetime, we see all of these things happening simultaneously, simultaneously, meaning the wars are there, the pestilence are there, uh, all this, the perplexity are there. They're all there, happening at the same time in our lifetime. Uh, the advice to us uh, by God is that when you see all of this happening at the same time, uh, you should look up, you should prepare yourself, put your family, put your house in place because redemption is near. Uh, that means uh, the generation, it says they're very to you, this generation will not even pass. So I believe in our generation here, uh, or it's not my generation, next generation, and all the things will be fulfilled in your generation. You will see Jesus appearing in the clouds of heaven. That's why, but uh, we will soon see uh, about the National Sunday Law when it is uh, legislated. What will follow after that will be the seven last plagues. But on the Sunday law, if you are marked to be saved, then you don't have to worry because seven last plagues will not affect you. The seven last plagues are the uh, wrath of God. Now we are dealing with the wrath of Satan. This is under the management of Satan, this world. But the wrath of God, you those who will be saved will be protected. It's like the ten plagues of Egypt. When uh, God sent those plagues, to uh, Egypt because Pharaoh uh, was always hardening his heart. He now was not letting his, uh, the children of God go. So the last plague was when the firstborn of Egypt died. But those who were with God, those who were obeying God, the firstborn were spared because God told them to sprinkle blood at the, at the doors of their home. And then the, when the angel of death come, he will spare those uh, firstborn uh, 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 houses with uh, sprinkled blood at the doors. Anyway, Jesus said, I am coming soon. Now the question that we are trying to tackle also besides his coming is what happens after Jesus comes? What happens after Jesus comes is uh, here, when we learned what the Bible teaches us about the second coming, the next question is what happens after he comes? Revelation 19, 11 says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and righteousness that judge and make war, which described the second advent of Christ. But then, after that, it says here, uh, we learned that the second coming will be followed immediately by a period of 1,000 years, which is mentioned in Revelation 21 to 9 and is commonly known as the millennium. So what happens after this comes, following immediately is called the millennium. This is a uh, millennium is 1,000 years. 1,000 years reign of Jesus Christ. Now what happens uh, when Jesus comes, there will be four, group, uh, four groups of people that will be around in this earth. Those that are, that are alive and connected to Jesus, they're serving the Lord, they're obeying him, Kept his word, and those who died serving the Lord. Uh, and those who were alive, but they are not, they don't believe in Jesus, they don't believe in God, and they're not connected to, to God. And those who died, not connected to the Lord, they died in sin. So when Jesus comes, according to the Bible, all eyes will see him. The reason why all eyes will see him is to uh, make people realize. Uh, if they made the right decision or they made the wrong, wrong decision. And when all I see him, 
those that are in the grave that will be saved, they will be resurrected. They will get up. God will compose their bodies together so they'll get up very quickly and they will join those people who are alive. So if you're alive, when Jesus comes and you will be saved, you will not taste that anymore. So they will join those who are alive and both of them will be taken by the angels to go up in the air to meet Jesus and to go to his heavenly kingdom in the third heaven where paradise is to stay with him for 1,000 years. Now, those who are alive and uh, we're not, are not connected to God, they will die. They will die. When they look at Jesus, they themselves know already because according to John 20, John 12, 48, uh, the word that I have spoken, uh, let me read to you, John 12, uh, John 12, 48, it says here, John 12, 48. He that rejected me and rejected not and received not my word, but one that judges him. The word that I've spoken shall judge him in the end. So when Jesus comes, he does not have to judge anymore. He, the judgment is already in the book. If you read this book and you have been told about what is uh, what is the truth and you do not obey it, you know that you are judged already as an unbeliever. So Jesus knows already, he will just separate the two. He will separate those who will uh, be judged not to be saved according to the book and those who are judged to be saved. So those who will not be saved, they will die. And those that are dead, uh, did not serve the Lord, they will open their eyes just for a few moments. And they will realize, oh, this was the, the Jesus that was preached to me before. I did not believe it. So he knows that he's not going to be saved. So he's going to go back in the ground again to be dead. And then uh, those who are not saved, they will be dead for 1,000 years yet. Uh, 1,000 years that those who were saved are up in heaven, enjoying their fellowship with God, discovering the different worlds, different planets up there uh, for 1,000 years. While on this earth here, everyone is dead. Those who are not saved, they'll all be in, in the ground. And those who die, uh, when Jesus comes, they will just die all over. So this, this place will be full of uh, dead people. Um, and uh, the scavengers will just eat them and their bodies will just rot here. While those who are saved, they will be up there in heaven with Jesus. And the only one who will be alive here is uh, the devil. But he will, it will be a very lonely place. It's uh, called a uh, bottomless pit because he has nobody to tempt. Everyone is dead. Now, now uh, of course, the people who will be saved will be going up to heaven. They will be fellowshipping with uh, uh, Christ. And then the living wicked, they will be slain. Those who are alive but, uh, but did not serve God when they come, when he comes, they'll be dead. So this whole earth will be full of dead people while those who are saved will be going with Jesus up there. So the earth will be desolate and uh, it will be desolate for 1,000 years. So as I mentioned, it will be full of, full people, uh, of dead people and Satan will be bound. Uh, the, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a 1,000 years and cast him into the bottomless pit called bottomless pit because he has nobody to tempt, shut him up, the seal upon him, and should receive the nation. No, he cannot tempt anybody because everyone is dead. But after 1,000 years, after 1,000 years, oh, this earth will be full of dead people, those who are not saved. But after 1,000 years, Jesus is going to bring down to this earth this new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem when the saved people go up to heaven, this is where they're going to stay in this new Jerusalem that's built by God. Uh, it was estimated, the size, it was, they're all in the Bible. You can go to my YouTube, you'll see the description of heaven. Just look for heaven and just look for hell so you know about heaven and hell. Because even the size, the size of this city is almost like about five uh, states of America put together. That it's so big that if all the people are saved from the time of Adam and Eve all the way 
uh, to the all the way to the last person who will be born when Jesus comes. If everybody will say they will all fit into it, and they each one will still have uh, 100 uh, square feet each, but not many people will be saved. So will not be saved because of the way the uh, trend of the uh, activities of people and the world. That's why many there'll be many empty places, but they will all be filled up because God is going to bring back his uh, former plan, Eden lost, Eden restored. But the soul city will come down. When it comes down, all the dead people on this earth who are dead, God is going to resurrect all of them. And when he resurrects them, Satan is going to tempt them again. He will say, oh, because of me, uh, that's why you're alive. So let us go and surround those people there in that city and let us make a war with them. And he's going to try to prepare battle to, to, uh, to attack the city of God. But as they are preparing to do that, God is going to send fire to burn them. So they will be burned. Now, if you read uh, Revelation 20, verse 5, it says, But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. It says that... Uh, uh, in, in verse 6 blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on sad the second death has no more power uh, over him so what I mean is that the, uh, when Jesus comes those who will be saved that, are, that died they will be resurrected so that's the first resurrection but those who are not saved they died they will not be resurrected and those who are alive they will die Okay, but after 1,000 years, when this new Jerusalem comes down with the saved people, it's going to resurrect all the people that, are, that were left dead here who were not saved. Now, that is the second resurrection. Uh, he will resurrect all of them. Nobody can escape. And according to the Bible, you, they will be uh, paying the price, like uh, uh, they will be paying according to their deeds. So some people will burn longer, some people will burn, burn shorter, but even if you kill yourself, God will hold the uh, lives of people. That's why you cannot destroy yourself. You will wait if your term is to burn for two days, for two days you'll be burning before you expire, before you become dust, and then you'll, you'll no longer come back. So I said, blessed are those who are resurrected in the first resurrection, because the second resurrection, the second death, will not apply to you anymore. Okay? So it's very, very firm here. That's why the uh, most important thing is to uh, just uh, obey God. And obey God, because it's not, it's not hard to obey God. Uh, his uh, his uh, instructions are very simple to obey. There's not, nothing difficult about it. I see that many people obey God uh, they go to church, they pray, but the Bible says, not everyone that calls on me, Lord, Lord, not everyone that goes to church, not everyone that prays to me will enter the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, but only those who do the will of God. So the only thing that I find hard to obey, that I find that with the, some people that I know, is keeping of the seventh day, Saturday, Sabbath. They know it because they say, uh, it's for the Jews only. It's for the Jews. It's not for the Jews because the Sabbath commandment was given by God right uh, at the very beginning of the earth. Adam and Eve on the seven, on the six days he worked. On the seventh day he rested. He blessed the day. He only blessed one day. It's good that he only uh, and he made one day holy only. He blessed all the days, but he made one holy. It's good that he made only one day holy, which is the Saturday Sabbath, because he made if he made every, all the days holy, we cannot work anymore because they're all for God. So we, God is only asking one day to be holy, to fellowship with him, even if you don't see him in spirit. Spend that whole day, 24 hours, that day for him. Now, and uh, but I have another topic on that, but it says here, let me read to you in Hebrews. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, 
it says here, uh, for he spake of a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, God rest on the seventh day. And it remained a rest therein uh, to those who, to whom it was preached. But some people will not enter this rest because of unbelief. The reason why many people will not enter the rest that God, the holy day that God suggested because of unbelief, he said. Today, if you hear my word, verse 7, harden not your heart. Uh, this, by the way, in Hebrews, some people say that the Sabbath commandment are, is only in the Old Testament. This is in the New Testament, Hebrews 4, 4 to 12, read it. Uh, Jesus said that if, if there was a mistake made in the counting of the days from creation until the time of Jesus, when he was here on earth about 2,000 years ago, he should have spoken of another day. He could have corrected it. But no, he, he practiced it himself and he taught his disciples to obey it. There remained therefore a rest for the distress for the people of God. For he who did not enter into this rest uh, is does that because of unbelief. See, let us therefore enter into this rest, lest any man fall in the example of unbelief. Many times he mentioned unbelief here. For the word of God is like a, a two edged sword. It's painful if you're not in the word of God because it hurts, but uh, God is like a doctor. He uses a knife, it might hurt, but after you are operated, you, uh, you feel good. Uh, Satan is also like a doctor with his knife, but he operates in you to kill you. So it's always because of unbelief. But if you read here, Revelation 21.8, the judgment of the Lord for those who do not believe, in, in Revelation 21, 8, he says here, but the fearful and the unbelieving, the unbelieving, those who do not believe uh, Jesus and his uh, teachings, they will have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It's very clear, second death. Who else will be brought to the lake of fire? It says here, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, those who worship uh, idols. Uh, all the liars, they will have the part in the lake of fire, which burneth uh, uh, and which burned with fire and brimstone. And First Corinthians six nine and ten also. Here's another judgment. He said nine and ten. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not enter the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. The fornicators, idolaters, idolaters is always mentioned. So if I were you, I will not never bow down to those idols anymore. The adulterers, the abusers of themselves and mankind, the thieves, the covetous, the drunkards, the revilers, extortioners, they will not enter the kingdom of God. That's a judgment. He already mentioned that this kind of people who disobey God's law are not going to enter heaven. Anyway, so... Uh, this is the what happens here. Uh, Satan and the sinners will all be destroyed. By the way, hell, according to Matthew 25, uh, 41. Hell is not for us. Hell has been prepared for the devil and his angels. But if you read Matthew uh, 25, 41, although it is preserved uh, for the devil and his angels, it says here, that, uh, let me just find it now. Matthew 25, 41, it says here. Then shall he say unto uh, the left, those who are on the left, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So fire, the hell fire, which will be kindled by God after the millennium is uh, for the devil and his angels. But he said that those who did not obey him and did not believe him, he is going to send them also together with uh, Satan to be burned in that lake of fire. So the question is, where do you want to be? The earth will be cleansed. There are only two places that we can go to. Go with God in the heavenly kingdom or go with the devil, with Satan, into that eternal uh, fire. That's the only choice. I hope that you join us as we prepare to meet Jesus when he comes. Give your heart to Jesus and 
be ready to meet them because when he comes, he is going to uh, execute the judgment that he placed in this book. And meantime, listen to this word of God. Listen to it, accept Jesus and believe him. Because if you accept the teachings of man, even your parents, they cannot save you. Even your own spouse. I was talking to somebody and he said that my spouse is very godly. I would just hold on to her uh, feet and I will go to heaven with her. No, it doesn't work like that. Your, if you could be spouse, the one of them might be saved and one might not be saved. So we, could, uh, uh, we are happy that we are still in a situation where we can serve God according to our conscience. Nobody can force anyone to believe whatever they want, but be careful where you believe, because God warned over and over that many people will be deceived by the wrong teachings. He said that we can lose, you can lose your hand, you can lose your feet. Don't worry about that, I can replace that. But if you lose your mind because you have accepted, you've been deceived by teachings that I did not teach, I'm sorry I cannot take you to heaven with me. I cannot save you because you will be a problem. I have promised the people who accepted, received and accepted my word and who believed me and obeyed me, I have promised them that I bring them to a place where there will be no more sin, no more sorrow, no more death, no more problems. So if we bring people like you who uh, do not want to obey me, when I call them, let's all gather together because it's Sabbath and uh, we will fellowship with each other. And you might say, oh, Lord, my worship day is till tomorrow or next day, then you'll be a problem. You'll be going against the tide. Or if you bring the thieves out there, they'll be stealing out there. So the problem. That's why uh, now we, when Jesus comes, we cannot bring anything to heaven. All that we can bring with us is our character. That's why he would like to mold our character, fix it right here while we are on earth, so that when we are translated to heaven, we already have the character of uh, this heavenly kingdom. And it will be easy for us to uh, migrate there because we already know the rules of the place. You see, we cannot uh, just say, oh, God is a very loving, understanding God. Of course he is. We're loving, but he cannot change his word. When he told Adam and Eve, uh, his plan was to, for, you will live forever. You can touch everything here, but do not touch this particular thing here. Do not eat this food. Because the moment you touch it, you will surely die. No one was supposed to die. Adam and Eve were supposed to live forever. But the moment you touch it, he spiritually he died, but eventually he started to grow old and eventually he died and he was buried. And everything in this world died, even the trees, even if they live for 200 years, eventually they'll die. So everybody died. Uh, which supposed to be eternal death. But God said, uh, we cannot just, because I'm talking about God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. They said, we cannot just let go, waste everything that we have done, the human that we made. They sin, we cannot just let them die forever. So let give them a chance to come back to us. So Jesus Christ, you have to go down. You will be born as a human being. And we have chosen Mary to be your mother. You'll grow up there, you'll be a human, and you will show the people how to be on earth and still be connected to God all the time. So Jesus showed us an example. And one of the examples he showed us was to make the Saturday Sabbath holy. Okay? So we have to follow his example. And those who uh, obey you, we will give them uh, we will redeem them from that everlasting death. We will make them, we will, even if they die, we will resurrect them and we will give them again that everlasting life that we promised it, should they have not sinned. So that's what we would like to long for. Let us accept Jesus, accept him and obey him and accept his teachings. Do not accept teaching that did not come from him because that is very risky. And then when he comes, he will take us to his heavenly kingdom and he will give us the crown of life, which is everlasting life. Jesus loves you. He died for you. 
so that you may live. Accept him as you, your personal savior. He will take charge of your life. Give all your worries to him, for he cares for you. Accept Jesus and be saved. God wants to receive and accept you in his eternal kingdom. The question is, will you accept his call? Jesus said, I'm coming soon. When Jesus said, I'm coming soon, some people mis uh, misrepresented that. And they said, he said, it's coming soon. Uh, when I was young, I was still a child. My parents used to tell me it's coming soon. I'm already 90 years old. He's not come yet. They didn't know. Jesus, God, uh, Jesus has an agenda when to come. As I mentioned, he mentioned about all these signs that he mentioned first. They will all come to pass. They will all happen first. And then the uh, National Sunday Law, seven last plague, and the seventh plague is going to appear in heaven. That is, that is the uh, schedule. But of course, he did not lie. He is come, he's coming he's soon to everyone. You know why? Because no matter how long you live in the church, even if you live 420 years, when you are 120 years old, it seems like life is too short. When you know you're about to die, you wouldn't want to die yet. Remember that queen who said uh, he has all kinds of property? I'm willing to give up all these properties just for an extension of life. Okay, but you can understand. When you're about to go, you're about to go. So whatever your age is, if you are about to die, you don't like to die. And when you die, you think that life was too short. If you're 100 years old, and you're, uh, you're about to die, you say, life is too short. I wish I was 20 years old only, and so on. And when you die, according to the Bible, if you're saved, it's just like sleeping for one night. You go to sleep, you, you're unconscious, you know nothing. But when you wake up, when Jesus comes and destructs you, when you open your eyes, you will see Jesus. So if you died 5,000 years ago, if a person died 5,000 years ago, and somebody just died tonight, Tomorrow Jesus comes when they will both wake up. That person who died 5,000 years ago, it seemed like it was just overnight. He just went to sleep one evening. So Jesus coming is soon to everyone. It's true. But he has an agenda to follow. I thank you very much, my friends, for being with us today again. But as I mentioned, I would like to encourage you, prepare your heart to meet Jesus because there's no better life than that. What is all of this? You can gain the whole world but lose your own soul. So what cow what is that? Even if you win, uh, you you take all you become the emperor of this world, just like Satan. He is an emperor of this world. But what what is he gaining for it? In the end, he will be burned, he will go into ashes, and he will never be able to come back. Life is so good that even if you die and you wake up again and you live forever, there's nothing better than that. We live in a place where there's no more sin, no more sorrow and death, and we live with Jesus forever and evermore. That is the 1,000 years millennium where we will be with Jesus. We are now prepared to sing our uh, uh, closing song. So let me uh, look for the song that we're going to sing for our closing song. Okay, so we are uh, we'll ready to sing the closing song.
What a powerful song. Jesus is coming again. Thank you so much, my friends. Let us bow our heads to seek the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for this promise of returning to this earth. To take your faithful followers, those who have received you, accepted your word, and believed you, and have decided to follow away you all the way through by practicing even in their lives all your instructions on how to become citizens of your eternal kingdom. I pray, dear Father, that you will help us be able to make it. I hope that you will change our ways. We are all sinners, but please help us to be able to walk in the pathway of righteousness. Of course, if we commit sin, because we are still in this world and we are inclined to temptation, if we sin, help us to be able to come back all the time uh, in order to be reconnected uh, to you. So, Father, there's no permanency in this world. No matter how much you establish yourself, no matter how healthy you become, no matter how rich you become, whatever it is, there's always come a time when uh, all of those will expire and all of these things will just go to nothing because when you burn the whole earth, everything will go with it, will just return to dust. But in the kingdom, in the promise that you have, you're going to resurrect us after this world of sin expires. We die because of sin, that we are even were born into sin, inherited sinfulness, even from our parents, but you are going to resurrect us and give us and uh, uh, you will restore back your original plan in Eden that way if Adam and Eve would not have sinned, they would have lived forever. But you're going to give this, uh, that back to us if we stay faithful to you and we connect with you until you come. So we would like to receive that eternal life, our Father. We'd like to stay with you forever and be faithful children of yours. Forgive us from all we have fallen to your glory and give us this uh, blessed Sabbath day today. I ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. My friends, happy Sabbath to all of you. And I hope that you will be blessed with God's message for you today. Thank you so much. May God bless you.